I'm, I'm pretty, I'm well, pretty well, sure. Well, Mark, huh? Well, you got that Marta Rosen thing that actually looks like it, it, it's got potential. Hey, 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 listen, listen. You, 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 you already know. You already know Vanish, so it's, it's no need to talk about Vanish. Yeah, <laughs> I talk about Vanish enough. <laughs> He's the king of the one-liners, the king of the one-line excuses. You know, he 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 like what he say. He like the guy that say, "I'm gonna go in him, I'm gonna go for him, and then I'm gonna go around him." And then they ask why he ain't fighting him. He said he hurt his left leg back in training camp, or he going through a manager issue. People tired of this job, man. Right. Or he's huh? gonna be in Mexico, so I didn't want to do it, or whatever. Yeah, he's having plenty of potential, man. Yeah, hey, man. He's, he's the worst dude I ever met in boxing, man. For real. And he's 30 and 0. That's with the thing. 20 something like, knockouts. It's like, dude, I mean, how long are you gonna you try to get to 40 and 0? Yeah. He's like, been putting on his butt and stuff. Not, not that that's a crime, but I mean, you're talking all this smack. You, you keep, you know, not taking these fights and then complaining that you're not getting big fights, but then when you have a t- you know a chance to showcase, you end up on your butt, you know, so I mean, I can understand Vanna's frustrations about getting a shot at the WBC, but it comes to a point in time where people not going to back him, he's thinking people going to back him because how crooked the WBC is, well Vanna, you didn't turn down two eliminators even if you weren't going to get the shot by beating Laura, by beating Angula, it would have put some type of, you would have had the public on your side saying, look, man, why is they doing this to Vanish? But every time he talks, people just retweet it and say, look at this guy again. I mean, he's hey. the butt of everybody jokes. And Kirkland went ahead and took it and knocked old boy out, you know, and then look where he was. He was right in a, a big play again, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. He, he, he turned down a career high person to fight Angulo. And then he said, then after the fight, he said, oh, yeah, I'll KO both of them guys. They so wide open. But then they gave him Kirkland as the winner, and he brought up another excuse. And then Laura, I mean, I, I think he's, I think he's, on his, to be honest with you, I, I think it's something about Laura that, that's keeping him away. I mean, he's saying that the first day going to go on, and he's finally going to fight him. We're going to see. Yeah, we're going to see. We're going to see who wins that first bid, too. Carcino, while we got you on the line, um, go ahead and give your thoughts on this. What probably is a showcase fight. Go ahead uh, and make sure you check out Carcino at BoxingSocialist.com and on YouTube as well. Go ahead, Carcino. Uh, yeah, I wanted to address that Vina situation too. Uh, Vina's Master Rosen has been the most avoided fighter at that weight class for the longest period of time. They would not put him in the ring with uh, Austin Trout, they wouldn't give him a shot at any of the guys when he won the Eliminator. He wants to fight Laura. He's the one that said, okay, I'll do it, even though he wants to guarantee that he fights for the championship, something that he should have had years ago. Every time they put him in a situation to win, they tried to do it when they put Joe Green in there, and Joe Green just totally embarrassed him. And ever since then, it's because he's vocal. They don't like him. They don't like him. He doesn't work well with their system. They want him to be appreciative of everything, but he puts everybody on blast of why he's being avoided, and they don't like him. Golden Boy does not like him. He's supposed to fight Austin Trout. That didn't happen. K-9 Bundry, he's supposed to get that fight. That didn't happen. And then the manager, managerial problems happened with the Kirkland fight. He did get injured at one point, so he couldn't, he had no choice but to sit out for a while. But this guy, for his size, his speed, and his power, the scout in the court is he is a bad matchup for their fighters. I can't wait till he fights Laura in this, when this fight first big goes out. Because that fight is going to happen. Because he wants to fight now. He's just like, I'm going to just take this fight anyway. And since they called it a final eliminator, even though Golden Boy doesn't want to put anything in writing, it is titled a final eliminator, so he doesn't have to fight an eliminator anymore. And he's going to get a shot, and he just agreed to go ahead and do it. So I don't know where that guy, or why would he just hate Vodka? That was just nuts. This guy has been completely avoided. And all the champions at that division, no one even thought about giving him a shot at the title. And he's 32 and up for a reason. 
their managers know better. That's why Todd was not going to let him go. You don't get rid of a guy who avoided because of the style matchup he is. He's still good. He still uses his height. He's fast, and he has movement and power. I would never get rid of a guy like that. You, you can sell him once he wins a big fight. I just want to see him in there with a skilled fighter like Laura. What are your thoughts on, you know, Martyrosian? How do you think this fight breaks down, Martyrosian and Laura? Uh, is, uh, is Carcino still on the last? Yeah, I'll unmute him. I'll unmute him right now. Carcino, you're no, on mute. You, you guys know he's listening. Is he listening? Right. Is he listening? Yeah. yeah, I'm a little Car- right here. Carcino, man, you need to leave them drugs alone to say somebody's avoiding Laura, man. Laura's being avoided by himself. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you need to stop, man. But nah, um, <laughs> man, Marvin Rosa will beat anybody at 54. Hey, listen, anybody I was at the fight. At listen, I was at the fight in New York when he fought Joe Green. Both of them stunk it out, man. It was a close stink out, man. Vanis is, is a very high, uh, a very celebrated amateur or whatever. He, you know, I, I don't front on his amateur skills. I would never call this dude a bum because it takes a lot to get in that ring because I know firsthand. But. Car- Carcino, he's not what you think he is, Carcino. He's not. He don't have no speed. Vanus is slow. Vanus actually got knocked down. Vanus has been knocked off his feet by lesser fighters. We talking about Kasim Uma. Kasim Uma really beat him. Now, you've seen that fight. If you've seen yeah, that fight, you know Uma won that fight. I at one point. I got him on 115, 113, I think of that. Yeah, Uma won that fight. I had Uma winning that one. He had all night. If you're a good fighter... You don't go life and death with Sal Roman. You don't go life and death with Kasim Uma. I mean, I know you have bad night. People have bad nights, but if your bad night is two and three times out of your opponents, come on, man, you're not that good. I mean, he's a he's an okay fighter. I think he's a C fighter at best. Laura is too slick for him. A southpaw with some power. I'm telling you now, Carcino. If they make, it's a reason why Vanessa don't want want to fight him. There's a reason why Vanis stayed away from him for about two years now. And you remember when Laura was calling him out, Vanis saying he couldn't get no fights, and Laura wanted to fight him. Vanis kept on shunning it away. But they're both on the same, as far as on the name recognition, as the same fighters. Vanis is not as good as you think he is, Carcino. I know you high on him or whatever, but he's not that good. I mean, he's a good well, we fighter. We're going to find out. Fighter. We're going to find out when he fights Laura. I actually like Laura. When Laura was... Uh, one of the prospects, I picked him and Brandon Rios to be the top prospects when they were both kept coming up. I said, those two are going to be the best to come up out of it. But hey, hey, you know what? You was absolutely no right about Rios because Rios, Rios is top ranked next star. Uh, it might be. It, I mean, yeah. But Name somebody on that roster. Chavez Jr. for that. They but, put a lot of stock in Chavez Jr., so. I mean, they're pushing him. being their next star, so. Yeah, but, I mean, I think it's more than Rios because look at the steady diet they feed him of come-forward fighters. I mean, you got to figure Manny Pacquiao is on his way out the door. So, I mean, next person, Chavez, okay, is a Mexican star, but you still need an American Mexican star because you have to look at where they're both going as far as... Yeah, I mean, I can see it. I like Brandon Rios' fight. I mean, normally he comes to fight when he was making weight. You know, he, he's got to go to 140. But as he goes up in weight, it becomes more dangerous for him. Because but if you, he fight guys his size, how is that going to, how is his style going to transcend with these guys who's going to be probably naturally bigger than him? And uh, Will he be another guy that really fighting out of his weight class when his skills is best at like 135? You know, I mean, I think he can get away with it at 140. He's right. still young. He's still young. He's walking around at 170 pounds. I think, to be honest with you, when it's all uh, said and done, he's going to be a full-fledged junior middleweight. He got good size. He's 5'9". He can take a punch because Miguel Acosta is probably one of the hardest hitters at 135. And, you know, he dinged him. He hit like a middleweight, and he was able to take his shots. So I'm quite sure he'll be able to take the shots. And, he'll, you know, he'll be able to walk down people. I mean, I think he need to get better on his skills, on his boxing skills. Because he has a very good jab when he want to use it, he just don't. He just don't use it, you know. And it's a lot of fighters who they can match him with carefully, and they stable that he can beat. I mean, I think he'll beat a Mike Alvarado. I think he'll beat Herrera. He'll beat a lot of them guys at 140 right now. I think him and uh, Fares, him and 
him and uh, what's his name uh, Garcia. I think that'd be a hell of a fight. A hell of a Are fight. I think Garcia. No, him and uh, him and Garcia. Him oh, and Danny, Danny Garcia. Garcia. Him and Danny oh, Garcia. Oh yeah, that would that would be a pretty good fight. That, that would be a hell of a fight. Yep. To be honest with you, I think the best fighter at 140 pounds is Lucas Matisse. Yeah, well, Lucas Matisse is going to fight Danny uh, Garcia. Should be on the Cotto undercard December 1st. But that's why Matisse has got to fight the, uh, I forgot his name, uh, Jose, the guy who was supposed to. Who was but that's not even a given he going to win that fight. I mean, and Matisse is the favorite, but that's not a given he win that fight, though. Yeah, that's that going to be a true, very so tough fight, man. we got to wait to see what that is. But Golden Boy is already penciling in Matisse as the winner, as, as they normally do, and they're trying to set up Danny Garcia and, and him to fight uh, on that card. That's number first, first card going to be crazy, man. Yeah, that would be crazy. That Cotto card right, is going to Cotto. Who you think, Cotto? I think, I, from what I'm hearing, it's gonna, probably going to be Kirkland because they want to put it on a pay-per-view. I haven't. Uh, the only two names I've heard was Canelo and then Floyd. Yeah, it was uh, the only two. It's, it's, yeah, it's slated New for York. New York. We it's slated for New York. I, we had um, well, Ness and them had Perez on the show, and um, he was actually talking about it. Like December for New York is going to be the place. It's December first. They talking about it. They 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 trying to see right now. They're they're waiting on the outcome of the Gale. And um and, and and Sturm too because they might Cotto might be attracted to go up to one sixty and fight the winner of that. So I yeah, that's that. next. That's not going to be for the pay per view on December first. That's after the fact. He's going to be the first. He wants to be the first Puerto Rican yeah. fighter to win four world titles in four different weight classes. So he wants, but they, but he's not trying to pick the best at one sixty. He's just trying to win. No, no. Nah. And that he just, just wants to know easiest. about the mental state of Miguel Cotto at this point. He just trying to get some things to to patent his legacy before he leaves. He, he doesn't really have the confidence, me, to want to be number one and want to fight the best anymore. Cotto, Cotto here for a paycheck. And I mean, can you blame me? Right. Look at all the stuff that he's been through. He didn't fought a guy with cement in his hands. He didn't also been weight drained. So now that he got things on his terms, I mean, you, you got to give it to him, man. He earned that right, man. You know what I mean? All the stuff he's been through. But I'm not saying that he shouldn't fight a good fighter. I think I think December first is really is only a two legged race. I think it's either going to be uh, Kirkland or it's going to be K nine. Because if he fights K nine and win that belt, how big is the unifi unification going to be in May versus Canelo? How big is that going to be? 